Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's Joe here from Merch University and uh, my co-host, Rachel. How's it going today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. And um, I know, uh, let's start off by, I know last time when we ended a couple weeks ago, um, we talked about kind of like a goal of getting pop sockets up. And mm -hmm. and so did, I think it was like 600. Did you meet that goal? I I think I'm off by about 20. I think I have 20 left to put in. Um, and this is way farther. And I was, I haven't put any, anything up this week. Um, because my dog had got sick, but I had almost hit the goal and I was like 20 away, but I am justifying it by saying that I've got a whole bunch of new listings up on other platforms. So I did get 600 new listings up. It just wasn't all on merch. So I kind of failed, but I kind of didn't. But yeah, we also I, said 20 create space listings. Did you do yeah, that? I didn't do any of those. I didn't do it. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like create space. Yeah. Is I, that horrible? No, it's not. I don't like it. The royalties are so low and it seems like so much work. Sorry, my dogs are growling in the background. <laughs> it's okay. And it just seems like so much work for so little payoff to me. Girl. No, ma'am. This one guy um, posted oh, in CreateSpace University, and he said that um, he's made like $1,000 in like a month or something. He only has like 10 books up or something, so I don't know. What is he selling? I need to I don't know. It. But um, I mean, I, I think I have less than 10 up, and I haven't sold anything. Yeah, I haven't sold anything. And actually, I didn't meet my... Uh, pop socket goal either but i did get up a bunch of listings i, I probably short like a hundred but i did get a lot of shirts up on etsy and i did mm -hmm. a couple of just like some regular shirts to uh, merch so I yeah did i did a lot of etsy i'm trying to um god my dogs are being jerks today <laughs> my dog's on new medicine she's really hyper so bear with me i'm sure you can hear that um yeah i got a lot up on etsy and i'm liking it but i'm I don't like how slow I'm spoiled by merch. It's going real slow to start out with. So I think um, my focus is going to be get all my merch listings up because I'm at the 4,000 tier and I have about 2,200 listings. So I'm going to focus on trying to get the rest of those 4,000 up. Yeah. And then um, just, you know, and then, and then with those designs, I'll go put on my other platform. So. You see my dogs being jerks. I see them. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I I want to fill up the two thousand. I'm already eligible for four thousand on merch. I don't think that I have a chance of filling up the four thousand while still like doing other platforms. So I'm gonna try and get the two thousand on merch. That's my goal. Yeah, I really want to get like my two thousand slots filled for merch, and then. Um, I want to get some more up on Etsy if it continues to, you know, have an upward trajectory from, you know, from now to next month. But I want to try and get um, some more stuff up on Redbubble. Um, and what's the other one? There's another one that people are doing. Is it Zazzle or something? Spreadshirt, I think. Or Spreadshirt, yeah. I want to try and get on a bunch of different platforms because I'm worried about Q4 with merch so many listings like went missing last year and um, November was really good for me. Let's see. October and November were really good for me last year, but December was not great. And that was because all my listings were like gone. Like they oh, weren't, wow. you know, they were hiding listings. So it wasn't terrible. I think in December of last year, I made like $700 but the month before that, and this is, I mean, I only had like a hundred and something listings up they, then. And the month before that I had made like 1500 plus and that was in November. So I'm a little nervous for December with merch because they can't seem to keep up with demand. So I want to make sure that I'm spread out this year. So I'm still capitalizing on Q4. How many live listings do you have now on merch? Um, over 1200. It was, it should have been a lot more than that, but uh, a whole bunch of mine started coming off. So it's like, you're just constantly fighting this battle and it seems like you upload 400 designs and you have the same amount that you had last month. It's so crazy. Once you get to 1600, they'll tear you up right away. I, know. I need to try, cause I can do, I mean, I can spend a whole day and do 200 a day. So for in two days, just cranking them out, I should be able to get hit the mark. 
I think they were saying um, August 10th was like 90 days from when they announced that they were going to 180 days. Mm -hmm. So like after August 10th, we should be good for yeah. six months. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the ones that I listed like right before they changed changed it over and those are all falling off and I'm just like, oh no. Which, what do you do? Do you relist the ones that fall off? I don't actually. I don't either. Every now and then, if I see something that fell off and I think maybe I uploaded it too early for a holiday, which this is when it was three months, you know, you would upload too early. Now it was six months. If it falls off, just don't even bother. Every now and then I'll have a really good design that I'm like, well, maybe I just keyworded it wrong and I'll try it again. And I've never like re-uploaded one in itself. Yeah. I actually had some sell um, like on the last week. It sold. So, I mean, the last week it was about to be taking off and it sold because mm -hmm. I lowered the price. So I think helped. Amazon pushes them when they're about to fall off. I think Amazon like gives them a little extra push to see if they can stay on. Cause I have that happen a lot and I don't edit the price or anything and it'll be a couple days out and it'll sell for the first time in three months. Yeah. So, so. maybe we'll see. I, I did lower a bunch of shirts and I have, I've been actually, I have uh this past week I have uh, like the most sales I've had in a while. So. I oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and you've been, we both kind of uh, been doing um, dabbling in the Etsy. Yeah, I really like Etsy. And actually um, on Etsy, I've only, um, I haven't sold any, really any shirts. I've just sold other products. So it's yeah. really good. I haven't sold any shirts on Etsy, but that's probably because I didn't list any. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I just put all other products up. Um, I have another Etsy store that I started a few months ago that was just a niche base, like a small niche based store. And I was thinking that that tactic would be good to really like laser target people but I've had it for probably, I don't know, months and months. And I've only made like three sales on it. I've only got like 20 listings up. And I just kind of, I don't know. I just kind of like ran out of ideas. Cause like when you do something that's just a small niche, like how many shirts can you really come up with without losing quality? So I started a new store on the 30th. Yeah. On July 30th with Etsy. Um, and I've got a hundred listings on it and I've made a whopping two sales. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, it's still early. It's only been like, you know, four or five days. I think I have like eight sales in the last month. So I did, I did in July, I think I had eight or nine sales. So I was happy about that. Well, the Roy like one sale on Etsy's royalties equals like five sales on Amazon. Depending That's on true. Like, yeah. The royalties so they, are really you know, good. The numbers aren't, you know, the sales numbers aren't always the important thing. I see it a lot, even, you know, on Merch, uh, Merch Minds, Merch University, all these groups that we follow. I see people posting their sales numbers. And most of the time when I see somebody with an enormous amount of sales, I kind of think it's like, scammy i'm like all right well you're posting your sales but you're you know scribbling out your numbers yeah i mean you could have sold 150 shirts in one day with one cent profit though so that number is not important you know what i mean that number becomes worthless if you're not making money doing it that's true so you know i see one sale and i'm so spoiled by the sales number on merch i see one sale on etsy and i'm like oh but that you know if i saw five sales i'd be excited but the reality is, you know, compared to like Etsy and say what I make on a pop socket, one sale equals four to five pop socket sales. Yeah. So oh, and in my pop sockets, I have a, I have one, one that's doing really good. So I've been selling you? a lot of that, but oh, other than that. That's it. Just the one. <laughs> yeah. But it's cute. It keeps selling. So that's all it takes though. That's all you need. Yeah. My pop sockets are doing good. I'm selling about 50, 50 now shirts and pop sockets. Um, my sales are about 50% pop sockets. I noticed it kind of plateaued there for a little while. I had like incredible sales and then I guess it got really saturated or merch maybe was hiding listings because they were having a hard time meeting demands starting out with. Um, and then I saw it just go back up again and it's kind of plateaued. I'm pretty happy where, I mean, I probably average, 10 to 12 pop sockets a day. What did you end up with July? Cause I know at the, what the very, uh, the last time we talked, you had like 300 cells or something on merch. Yeah, it really 
it really kind of went down a bit at the end. Let me look and see real quick. Yeah, because I have a friend. He was telling me his first two weeks on merch were really good, like mm -hmm. in July. And then, like he said, like his sales just kind of tanked at the end, the last two weeks of July. I mean, I stayed over a hundred per seven days, hundred sold per seven days. But I mean, the first two weeks I was at like two fifty products for seven days. Let me pull it up and I'll see. Yeah, um, I would figure you'd be like, oh, well, maybe like four. Did you get four hundred sales? Yeah, I think I did. Let's see. We got to pull up that pretty merch. I know. <laughs> My computer is being wonky today. Let's see. We uh, 627 sales. Yeah, that's really good. So you yeah. did you more than double. So. And that was after, let's see, 16 returns. Wow. Those returns, man. I miss the days when we didn't have to deal with that. Yeah, I had like, I had like five or six returns. So you know, I don't think it's right. I don't. Um, you know, Amazon does a lot of things that I don't agree with, but when it comes to the returns and us getting our royalties taken away for it, yeah. I mean, we are designers. You know what I mean? They sold the product with our design on it. If it was a quality issue, that that's not our problem. Yeah, that's their problem. So. That has nothing to do with us. But Amazon, they're greedy. They are greedy, which I mean, I'm still with them. I can't complain too much because I haven't done anything to make me not want to do it anymore. I make a lot of money. So but still, it's just like, gosh, let us have something. I'm hoping that they don't drop the royalty again. They did that last year, remember? I remember. And it was a pretty significant drop. Hopefully they won't do that. Hopefully if it if it stays like this, it'll be good. If it drops more, that'd be crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean it's so hard. You know, my opinion is as somebody who's shopped on Amazon for years. I I've had Amazon Prime subscription since it came out, since it was like the first month when it first got launched. So I go and I I shop on Amazon probably three times a week, just buying things I need for my house and stuff. And why I shop on Amazon is because I think I can find a better price and I can get it to my house in two days. That's the only two reasons I shop on Amazon. So now if they drop these royalties and all this stuff, the prices of things on Amazon is going to go up and people aren't going to feel like they're getting a good deal anymore. Yeah. And you don't get, it says prime under, it's kind of misleading. It says prime under it, but it's not two day. You don't get it in two days. It's like 10 days, two weeks sometimes. So yeah. it's a little misleading. I think that's why we all get a lot of cancellations is because people click on it, go to buy it. And then when they get their confirmation, it says guaranteed delivery by, and it's like two weeks out. And they say, oh no, never mind. I don't want it. Yeah, that's true. So, that you know, they're thing. misleading people by putting the prime thing there. And so we're already like fighting a battle with, with having to deal with that. If they make us raise our prices in order to, you know, compensate for a royalty change, I think it's going to be, you know, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. Yeah. What do you think about the new update that's going to be happening? I'm pissed. Why don't I have it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like reloading every five minutes. Do you have it? No, I don't have it either. I mean, I have it where it says like marketplace and .com, but I don't have the international selling. I think only, actually only a few people, I know only a few people that have it, so. I mean, I saw, I've seen some contradictory information about it. Um, let's see if you can clarify. Some people are saying that your products that you already have up, Amazon sent out an email saying that they were going to like. Transfer them? pre-choose, like pre-choose some of your products and go ahead and list them on the international. Um, is that true? Yeah, they are. They do. That sounds incredible. So we could literally just get approved for international selling and triple our income without touching anything. Yeah. That, that's been happening to, to uh, one of my friends. She was telling me that some of her listings are getting transferred, but the, you know, it, every that counts as a, and upload every time they do that though. I'd be okay with that. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that at all. Give it to me. I'll take it. And she's already getting sales on those other platforms. So, and so, but it's not being translated into a different language. 
Yeah, they're translating the language. Except, oh, the, I mean, not the shirt, of course, but the the listings they are. So I wonder if they're translating themselves on these pre-chosen ones, if there's going to be an option for us to do the listing in English and them automatically translate it for us. I don't know. That's a good question. Because I, I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> what, what is it? Is it, um, what is it that got approved? Is it Japan? No, German and then the, the UK. Okay. Yeah. So, well, UK speaks mostly English. Yeah. Correct. And then it's, Germany yeah. is not, that's not their fluent language, is it? It's not English, it's German. <laughs> I should really look at a map or something. Sometime. Come on now. Just joking. My geography skills are pretty, pretty low. <laughs> but uh, what's funny, here's what's funny is that um, I watch, uh, you know, there's the show America's Got Talent. Mm -hmm. Okay, but there's another show it's called Britain's Got Talent. Yeah, I watched that, it. I watch it all the time, but they say some jokes that I have no clue what they're talking about. They're talking English, but I'm just like, uh, there's going to be a learning curve here. Yeah, well, their slang is a lot different. Like, like words, like, like, what is it? Like what we call a biscuit or they call a cookie, a biscuit. And mm -hmm. we call like a biscuit, a biscuit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, just like things that are the same words, but they wouldn't make any sense to us. Yeah, so we're just we're gonna have to figure out their lingo. But you know what? It, when, in the groups, in our groups, I notice a lot of people are going like, you know, what's an American this or that? You know, people yeah. are from other countries are trying to figure the American stuff out too. So well, English is the hardest language, the most um, difficult language to learn if it's not your first language. Yeah. So I know there's just so many words that are the same, and it's it's the grammar and stuff's really difficult to learn if that's not your first language. Um, I think that not saying that we should all go and learn German by no means, but I mean, it is an opportunity if you were looking to learn a second language, here's the little push, you know what I mean? Like Exactly. And I think there's a lot of people in the groups that are like from Germany that are no German, so they can help us out. So I don't know if I was going to learn another language, I don't think German would be what I picked. I don't think that's a very like, um, sexy language to speak <laughs> you know what i mean like it's not like french or something like that so we'll see yeah um i'm excited though did you see i don't know if you saw i was reading the faqs and stuff did you see that there it's not just going to be um the uk and germany it's going to be canada and japan as well no i didn't see that so i was reading the faqs and the currency they have other currencies already listed in the FAQs. I did see the um, the one for, uh, yeah, I did see the, I didn't see the Japan one. Yeah, I believe so. Let me see. I can't remember where I saw it. Did you see it under like resources? Yeah, I think so. I'm looking to see if I can find it. Publishing to UK and DE maybe. Well, I know that, um, Amazon, the Kindle publishing, mm. you can do it like on Japan and um, they have tons of other sites that. I can't remember where I saw it. I'll try and find it and I'll send you a screenshot of it when I find it. But it said like um, with the inner, when it was like giving an update about like the international, um, like your payments and how it works and stuff like that. And yeah. the FAQs, it was listing um, like, the currencies you would receive payments in and then they would be converted to us dollars and the currencies they listed was like the uk germany japan and canada i believe oh wow so i don't know if that's maybe you know maybe it's a conspiracy and they just but it seems like a hint that it's not just gonna be those two i'm looking in like the banking information and mine only says the uk and um, germany let's see i can't remember where i found it I think I was on my phone when I looked at it. Well, maybe you found something that nobody's found. I think it was under, I think I, well, no, somebody else had posted it. And then I was like, wait, what? And so I went and looked to somebody else had posted that and that's where I saw it at. And then I went and looked on Amazon and found it. Oh, wow. So, because, you know, people post stuff and I don't believe them most of the time. I'm like, wait, is that fake? I mean, we're all really good at Photoshop. You never know if, like, the pictures that they send are real. 
Yeah. I'll look for it. I'll try and find it. But I did see that. So maybe, or maybe I dreamt it and it doesn't exist. But I'm pretty sure I saw that. Here's some of the things for um, the publishing to UK and Germany it says, uh, like the questions are, they have like the, the FAQs or mm -hmm. how can I upload my designs to Amazon dot, you know, UK and Germany it says, you'll be able to upload designs to the Merch by Amazon portal with a new option to select the intended country. Um, can I upload in multiple countries at once or products? No, there's, no. Only, there's a, currently an option. You'll need to create a new listing for each product in each country. Mm. And says, Should I expect different review process for each country? Then it says the submission process and review times will be the same. However, please note that your design will be reviewed for compliance with all policies for your target country before it's published. Please ensure that all submissions are compliant with the policies applicable for your target country. And I'm going to say this, and this is probably going to stir up some people that are about to get this. And I hope that I don't start a really bad trend, <clears throat> but, um, Trademarks are different, let's say, between here and Germany. They have their own trademark system. You know, things that are trademarked here may or may not be trademarked there in clothing. So I'm wondering yeah. if this is going to start people, you know, doing some infringing on trademarks because technically it's not trademarked over there. So I don't know how that works legally. If we live in the US and we're selling it in Germany, do we abide by both trademark laws or just Germany or? I'm not sure. I think maybe just that country, you know? Oh, here's a cool thing. It says, how will I be paid? Your Amazon.uk um, and Amazon.de payments will follow the current Amazon.com royalty payment and processing schedule. You will need to add bank information for your royalty payments from the Amazon UK and Amazon.de, and you will see your earnings for each co country in the Analyze tab. If you oh. use the if you use the same account, your payment currency will remain the same. Please note you will see earnings in pounds and euros on your dashboard and Analyze tab. Uh, visit the irs.gov currency conversion exchange rate for more information. I just have, I have so many questions about selling internationally. Like, do we have to pay extra taxes on this stuff? Is the taxes different because we sold it internationally? Like, it's going to be like when merch first started and nobody knew <laughs> what was going on. Like, we're all just, I have a feeling we're all going to screw some stuff up and hopefully nobody loses their account. I'm I know. <laughs> Uh, it says, there's another quite a couple more questions. It says, how will you, how will I know which designs um, are live in which country? It says, you'll be able to select your ta target country when uploading your products and manage your page. We'll have separate tabs to show you your status of products on Amazon.com, Amazon.co.uk, and Amazon.de. Then the last one, um, what happens if a design is rejected for one country and accepted for another? Your design will go live in countries that's been approved for publishing in. If your design is rejected for publishing in one or more countries, it will not be published. At all. That's what it says. There's going to be some, uh, there's going to be a lot of gray areas open um, wow. with this. Like, I just know there is. Like, like, I don't know. Is the Superman symbol, is that trademarked in Germany? You know, just as an example, if it's <laughs> not, does that mean we can go sell Superman gear in Germany? Like, I don't know. So this says it's like, so your design will go live in countries been approved for publishing in. But then it says if your design is rejected for publishing in one country or more, it will not be published at all. So that's kind of weird. Kind of contradicted itself there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, really bad. Um, yeah, we're all there's gonna be a learning curve. I'm um excited about you know them saying that some of the products are automatically gonna be pre-chosen and put over there. And that way I would feel safe because it's like if Amazon pre-chose them to put them over there, then I'm not worried about them getting rejected. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Here's the tax questions you wanted to know. It says, what is VAT? Because that's like, you know, the VAT tax. And is that VAT is the value added tax. That's for the other countries. And um, a tax on a consumer's ex expenditure is collected on taxable transactions such as delivery of goods, imports, and moving goods between the... Um, Europe countries. And here, the second part of it is says, what is the VAT rate? 
to, ex to the extent relevant for merch, the VAT rate for apparel ship to Germany is 19%. For apparel ship to the UK, the VAT rate, except for young, young children's, is 20%. Hmm. Then, the, then the last question, how does VAT impact my royalties? VAT is charged to the buyer as, as a percentage of the price goods sold. In Europe, the purchase price is exclusive of VAT. But as explained in the production and distribution schedule, we will not we will not take taxes on the purchase price into account when calculating your royalty, but calculate the royalty on the net price, meaning purchase price minus the applicable VAT. But wow. then we're still res I think then we're still responsible to pay taxes. I know every year when my accountant does my taxes, they send me like a little form in my email and say, just fill this out and then we'll do the rest for you. And like one of the main questions are, did you make any income in any other countries outside the U.S.? Yeah. And I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to have the IRS come after me anytime soon. <laughs> and it says, what countries does Amazon ship to? And they ship to the United States, King, United Kingdom, and Germany. When will customers get their products? Printing and shipping times are based on the shipping method uh, of a customer's address. Please refer refer to the specific product and detail page for the up-to-date shipping. So I'm assuming they built some manufacturing warehouses there, over there. I mean, they're not gonna, I imagine they're not gonna ship them from the US to Germany and Europe or UK. Yeah. And I'm not gonna go over the rest, but there's a, it says tax interview questions. If you wanna go to, um, I found this just on the- um, Yeah, I see it. Just on the under fact, FAQs, like you said. Yeah. So. You guys want to go, go check it, it out. You know, all that mumbo jumbo. I might just send it over to my accountant and ask them to explain it to me in simpler terms. <laughs> yeah. Just to be on the safe side. These are things that people get excited about, but they have to realize that there's, you know, a lot of different rules. And think about all the people that have lost their accounts by not following the rules. It's going to be the same way. So, like, it's going to be a new process while I'm going to be excited whenever I get it. And I hope that Amazon just pre chooses some and puts them over for me. So I don't have to worry about it. And then I'm probably going to sit back and watch this sounds horrible, but watch some other people make the mistakes and learn from their mistakes <laughs> because I'm not trying, I don't want to lose my account over just being clueless. So, I'll, you know, there's no research out there about it. Yeah. I think hopefully Amazon will do some, I don't know. Hopefully they'll do something for us. Hopefully so, they'll help um, us. But Amazon's not really known for like really giving us a lot of information. Like you can't even ask them a simple question without them saying like, no, we can't help you. We can't give you any type of advice. Exactly. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I'll let some of the other people figure it out. Maybe I may I'm thinking by the end of the month that hopefully we should be already on that. So, well, you know, there's still people that don't have pop sockets. I know. That's so sad. What do you think about that? Why, why do you think that is? I believe that Amazon is probably in a, implementing a process where like there's like maybe a minimum requirement. Um, and I don't think it's like the minimum, like you have to have sold a hundred products. I think it's more of a, like a percentage, like your listings to your sales, to your time ratio. You know what I mean? Like how long you've been on there, how many listings you have and how many sales. I feel like there's an algorithm that are, is putting people in tiers of like, who's going to sell the most products if you give them this, you, you know what I mean? Maybe like a high tier, medium tier, low tier. And then, you know, the people that just get pushed to the side, sadly, or, you know, just get fall through the cracks. But I think that they had all intentions of giving it to everybody. But I think, we're all uploading so many and they're already having a hard time keeping up with demand that they're just not letting anybody new in right now. And they will, it'll slow down. It'll, you know, people stop uploading 200 a day and those people get them hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully people will get in pretty soon. I know a lot of people have been asking about it. So for a while, <laughs> so. I know. And I feel like kind of like the excitement and the novelty of it's kind of gone now. So now when they get it, it's not going to be as exciting as it was when we got it. <laughs> I know we were really excited. It did really well for me. It made me a lot of money last month and it's continuing to make me money. So, so what's your, what's the strategy? What can people do? If they're not selling any pop sockets. 
I mean, honestly, you know, I'm a kind of person that's like, and I know we had talked about this. You said that you had something sell good and you just, you know, you want to dive in, dive into it. If you are doing good on t-shirts and you've really tried and put up pop sockets and they're not doing well, I'm not saying give up, but like focus your time on what's making you money. You know what I mean? Don't spend time on things that aren't making you money. If t-shirts are making you money and pop sockets aren't, just focus on t-shirts and maybe in your free time, throw up a few pop sockets and do some research. And I mean, and the same goes with like niches. If you are making t-shirts or, or pop sockets and you're uploading in a hundred different niches, but only five of them are selling, go to those niches you're selling and focus your time and energy on that. You know, just use your time for what's actually going to make you money. I think I already told you, but um, I was doing that yesterday and I was like, hey, man, this one niche is really doing great for me. Mm -hmm. And so um, last night and today, I pretty much uploaded like 100 designs to this one niche. So I do that all the time. If I see and I've got a couple like I have a list that I write down if I see something's consistently selling. And I don't mean like a viral shirt. You don't have to have a shirt that sells 100 in a day or something crazy. But if you have a shirt that's selling one or two every single day, then that means that market is there and it's probably not that saturated or the, you know, or the, the demand is there regardless. If you see consistent sales, dive in and put as, you know, flood, flood the market as, as best as you can while still keeping it good quality and competitive prices. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. I'm actually going to, um, I think I heard somebody was saying that they're at a really high tier. I forgot what tier they're at, but they're probably at like 30,000. <laughs> and they were saying that um, when they come to like each holiday, they're uploading 2,000 2, designs to each holiday. Oh. And they're getting like crazy sales. They're And like, I don't know, they're making like $5,000. I imagine they're one. outsourcing some. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if they're out. No, they're making all their own designs. Really? That just seems like so much every holiday. I mean, it's maybe just major holidays. I think they're doing one design, but they're also doing it to put it on premium and mm -hmm. long sleeve and sweatshirts and Still, hoodies. And 2000. That's a lot. I mean, it's a great strategy, though. I mean, it makes perfect sense. It's, it's something's going to hit. I, you know, people always ask on here is, you know, what's more important? Is it quantity or quality? And the reality of it is it's a combination of both. You know, yeah. you you want a lot of quantity of shirts because that gives you, you know, more links that people can buy from. But if the quality is garbage, the quantity is not going to matter. People aren't yeah. going to buy it. So you've got to find a good middle ground. You don't want to spend two hours on a design for a t-shirt, but you also don't want to use clip art off of Google. You, you know what I mean? With a white square background or something. Yeah. What do you, what do you think that um, caused you to, you know, make better designs? Just practice um, research. And nobody wants to hear that, that, you know, I'm sure it's like, they want to know like one video they can go watch that's going to teach them everything they know about designing. And it's just, it's an accumulation of like continuing to educate yourself. So like when you see a new design that you like, a lot of people see something, they say, Oh, well, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to design that. So I'm just not going to do that design. That's when you go and you get on YouTube and you watch the videos and you watch the tutorials and you learn that skill. And after a couple months, you're going to learn so many skills. Every time you see a design, it's going to be so easy to make it. You're going to know exactly how to do it. And that's so true. Like uh, what I do sometimes just to practice is I will find like a really cool design and then I will just try to like mock it, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, exactly for what it is. Absolutely. What is it? Was it your group or there was one group that used to do that? They'd like put a design up and try and get everybody to um, like, get it as close as they could to that design yeah that was mine i was doing i was having people make like um the saved by the bell logo and nice. preference of bel-air and like all the like these popular tv shows and 
I would say make your own version and post it. And people were doing it. I need probably need to do that again. I say you should. That's a good way for people to practice and people to remember to practice. You know what I mean? And they're gonna learn something every single time. Every time you do something different. I mean, it's so easy to want to just go on and do text based designs. Um, and that works, but even then you have to know what looks good because if you're using five different fonts and you're curving and all this, odds are without doing some research on typography or things, I mean, and this, this is free research. You're not paying anything. You're just giving your time. And it was like I talked about before, don't spend your time on things that won't make you money. This is something that is an investment in your time. You watch those and your designs get better and it's going to make you a lot more money. And you know what, those those one designs that have like curves or they might have ribbons behind it with words mm -hmm. over it. Actually, all those designs are really, it's just a step-by-step -step process, mm -hmm. you know? They're very easy and there's hundreds of thousands of videos that show you how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I personally use Photoshop. I had never used it before I started designing t-shirts. And so I learned it from scratch a year ago. And I have no problem. And I've been fluent in Photoshop by about month two. Every now and then I'll come across something that I'm like, oh crap, I don't know how to do that. And Photoshop is such a popular um, program. Um, so is Illustrator. Um, and I know there's like an online version you can get so you don't have to pay the big bulk for it. It's so popular. There's so many resources out there that you can learn from. The people that aren't learning are the people that aren't hungry enough. If you're hungry enough for it, you're going to like want to be the best at it. And yeah, like you said, there's free education mm -hmm. online. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're not, if you're not educating yourself, you're not trying to learn, you're not trying to get better, then you're just kind of being lazy. Yeah. I mean, once you get to it, you, you get to stop. I, I watched, dozens of YouTube videos for a couple months. And now, I mean, it's very rare that I have to look something up on, you know, YouTube. Just do it, educate yourself and your designs will be better. And if your designs are better, then your sales are gonna be better. I've been uploading, actually probably a, uh, a lot of the designs that I've been uploading lately have been on my phone. <laughs> so. But you know what, that's, I mean, if you're doing simple text-based designs, 100%. I mean, a lot of my designs are text based. They could easily be done on an app. Um, when I go out to the beach or I'm at the vet's office with my dog in the waiting room to get those simple designs out, I definitely, I've downloaded a couple of the apps, but I haven't dove into them yet. Which one I, do you use? Yeah. I use the vintage app and I use uh, over app to like resize it and stuff. Okay. And you can do PNG yeah. on that and everything. Yeah, you can do all kinds. You're gonna upload it straight to um, merch from your phone. Really? I'm actually gonna come out. I've been like trying to make like a course for it lately, so hopefully that'll work. I'll come out pretty soon. Definitely, I'll look into it. That way, I can go sit on the beach and work at the same time. Exactly. I could do that. That sounds like a good day for me. Cause I do it anyways. Like if I'm like out of town or something, I'll just. Mm -hmm. Or somewhere, you know, just away from home, I'll be making yeah. all kinds of designs on my phone. So, what's cool is like what I do if I if I'm at home, I'm making my phone. I, I'll upload them, but I won't finish them because once you like, if you once you upload the the graphic, once you see it on your phone, you're like, okay, it's uploaded. You could pretty much just get out of that app. You got to stay in the app until it uploads. But then once it's done, then you can go make another design and come back and do it. But um, then I'll do that. Then I'll come to my computer and they'll all be in draft, and then I just Oh, that's that. nice. Because I don't try to put all the words on my phone because you know, it's really small. I was about to say, that's probably not an efficient use of time trying to type it in on your phone, which I know there's a lot of people out there that are doing it 100% on their phone because they don't have, you know, access to a laptop. Or, those are the people that are hungry. They're making it work. Yeah. If all you have is your phone and you're saying, you, could, I mean, there's no excuse not to not to be getting uploads done. And actually my top selling design was made on my phone. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of cool. Shoot. One of my top selling designs, one that's just like an evergreen, it sells all year long, a few every day, nothing like viral. It was probably, I probably made it in my second month, second or third month on merch and it still sells. And to be honest, it's not that good. <laughs> 
Um, you, you know what I mean? Compared to what I'm capable of doing now, every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I just want to tweak a few things and fix a few things, but it's selling. So obviously I'm not going to, but yeah. So it's, um, it's, it's weird. The things, you know, that people buy and it's not, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have great designs, but you know, the better your designs are, the better your sales are going to be. Do we want to come up with another challenge for, uh, the next week? Absolutely. Let's try and make one million dollars. No, <laughs> no pressure. Um, yeah, I I'm trying to. Think. All right, I'm gonna let you come up with it. I came up with that last time. So, True what point. are you wanting? You're wanting to focus on merch because you're saying you're wanting to fill your things, right? Yeah, yeah, merch. Hmm. Maybe some Etsy too. I'd like to get to the 1600 mark. So I need. Um, I'd like to get over the 1600 mark because things are still going to be falling off. So I'd like to get to like 17 or 1800, 1700, I'm at 12. So 500 designs for me, that would definitely help me a lot. Um, 500 okay. designs the next week, but I really want to continue to work on other platforms too. I think it would be a good challenge for us to try and find a different platform to diversify into, okay. you know, you not do a whole lot. You don't have to put up a hundred designs or anything, but do some research and see what other platform you think we should start diving into. Okay. Maybe that's Redbubble or Spreadshirt or mm -hmm. Teespring or something. So, yeah, definitely. And then, you know, put 20 designs up or something on one of those so that we can, I mean, is, you know, Q4 is coming up quick. The more designs we have up on the more platforms, I mean, the money's going to roll in if we set ourselves up properly. Okay. I'm going to try to do, um, I have like 2,100 shirts on a merch up. So I'm going to try to get to, uh, let's see here, maybe like 400 more. Yeah. So 20, maybe I can have like 2,500 shirts by next week. Do 500 more. All right, 500 more. <laughs> Just cause, because I have to. So misery loves All company. Right. All right, twenty. so I'll have like 2,600 shirts up by next week. And everybody else that is, you know, in the tier that you're able to accomplish that, y'all do it too. You're going to, your your wallet's going to thank you. It sounds ridiculous. These numbers sound crazy. And if you would have said that to me six months ago, like do 500 designs in a week, I would have been like, what are you out of your mind? If you can't accomplish that goal, do some research on how to be more efficient with your uploading. Cause there's a lot of resources out there, you know, how you can quickly upload, how you can quickly design so that you can meet that goal soon because time is money. And if you can do things, you know, if you can do it like us and upload hundred, 150 in a day, you're, you're going to start seeing a huge increase in your sales. Yeah. And the more slots you have open, that's more opportunity. Mm -hmm. So if you've got slots open, fill them because we don't know what merch is going to do. They could freeze us up in October this year. Who knows? Uh, knock on wood. I hope not. <laughs> <sighs> Let's hope not. All right, guys. Well, thank you for um, checking out. And if you did meet your goal for last time, uh, comment in the post and let us know if you have any questions or you want us to answer for the next week, um, just you know, leave them in the comments and um, we'll get back. We'll try to answer them next week. Yeah, and let us know if you know another platform you think we should try, put it down in the comments below and we'll definitely check it out. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye y'all.